You know how Megabus always advertises $1 fares? Well, I booked a ticket from New York to San Antonio for just $3. Plus $5.49 of fees. Which I'd say is pretty good. At the time, this was the longest Megabus trip that could be booked, but since then they've apparently nuked all their service west of Atlanta, so... Just don't try this at home, because you can't. Along for the trip is my good friend Jeremy, but he spent way more because he didn't book in advance. Alright, let's go. This is one of many great terminals we'll be seeing over the course of the next three, three days. More or less. They've got the weird guy in the back, too. I hate the weird guy. Wow, that's mean to the weird guy. Do you like the weird guy? No. Yes, this is as good a seat as any. Did you? It means there's, this... there's dots. Oh, are you? Oh. Do you want to see if there's like seats up front? Yeah, you know what the dots are. The dots are the freaking guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Is the the guy's gonna be the heel of this trip? I've decided. We're just gonna blame everything on the guy. If that goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna call him the guy. We're not gonna call him anything else. Does he have a name? Do you think there's a canonical name? I don't care. He's the guy. This bus is delightfully empty. Like. If I'm getting restless at night, I can literally go back there, like the seat behind us. Just and sprawl out. You know, the window, yeah. You're very smart for Brian to pack a... Yeah, it's freezing on here. All right. Seat door. Well, yes. Our seats seem to be pre-reclined. Did you notice that? Yes. Hold on, I found it. Does it go any further back, or...? It's just locked? In the, I mean, that's good, I guess. I think we're just not bad, honestly. I, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. This seems better than Greyhound. I will point out the hard seats. Yes, hard and cloth. A pair of outlets here. Do they work? Mm. No. I wonder if we could try to... Uh -oh. Look at the one behind us. It's not better. Oh, jeez. We also have this nice mesh thing. We put like a water bottle in here or something. Better than the Greyhound cup holder. We have these green lights. We'll get some nice mood lighting once we start going. Um, oh, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 202. Okay, I, I can live with that. It's better than Greyhound. Oh. It took us a full hour to get through the Lincoln Tunnel, use the local road detour they had, and get on the highway out of New York. With just an hour and 20 minutes to make our connection in DC, things weren't looking great. All we could do now was try to get to sleep and let the bus take us to DC. There's no way to turn the mood lighting off. It's, it's getting quite annoying. It's really annoying. <laughs> That's why I have my Manta sleep mask. It's not sponsored. So actually... Elena, I have a Christmas present for you. What is it? Oh my god, what are you doing? I wrapped it myself. What's your favorite part? I can't see anything. I mean, I'm, I forgot how you actually can't see anything. Like. <laughs> I think it might be too late for Christmas, but maybe if you're late, then you can go and use promo code Poor bid to get 10% off your order right now. It even works on lizards. Alright, so the bus made its way down the Northeast Corridor, making witching hour stops in Philadelphia and Baltimore. We were making up time, which was great. It was just really hard to sleep because this bus was freezing. I can, like, find a comfortable position. Yeah, I also can't because all of them are cold. But thankfully we left Baltimore just 42 minutes late, and we decided to check out what the downstairs part of the bus was like. It's way warmer down here. It's so weird down here. Like half of it's elevated. And this part isn't. And then our outlets are on the ceiling. But not on that side. It's weird and cramped when it's warm. This is the deepest point on the interstate system that we're in right now. This tunnel under the Baltimore River. And that's a fun fact. Yeah, it is. Whoa, the DC streetcar. Whoa, the DC circulator. I guess that can only mean that we're in. Look how it's like a hole. Oh, I see. Do you know how weird it is? Yeah. Proudly transporting our valued customers more than 100 nations nationwide and growing. I sincerely doubt that. I'm, I'm just so glad we're not dealing with this. I don't know what it's doing, but I'm, we just don't have to deal with it. Huge thanks to our friend Ryan for getting us breakfast during what turned out to be a pretty tight transfer. It was helpful as we're making our transfer from New Ork. M38 to Atlanta. There's like a good amount of people actually making the transfer from our bus to this bus. So I bet they probably would have had help. Yeah, Christiansburg, Knoxville, 
No. Midland. That's wrong. That sounds like a more fun route than the one we're taking. Bye. 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 Get to Atlanta safe. All right, here we go. The boarding process begins. So this, this bad boy is like a 12 hour experience. This is the true test of our metal. This one has a New York livery and it has an old variant of the guy that looks even creepier than usual. So this is a different bus model that's significantly nicer. We have this modern panel, and then we have some great outlets where it's two outlets and, and two works. USBs, it and it works. It's not gonna kill us. Oh, we go. we're going. We're going. Yeah. We're going. Checking your phone. Check my phone. Check my phone. Eight oh six. One minute late. This is what? Thirteen hours. A little over thirteen hours. Ooh. Yeah. <gasps> It doesn't at all, oh man. We this is the one that is the blue mood light. This oh, would have yeah. been so much more pleasant to sleep it's on. Not like yeah, it's like very subtle. Will there be a good sight line? Will there be a good sight line? Oh, Ooh, that's that a good sight good, line. <laughs> DC is a city with good sight lines. Look, it's the Bunker Hill Monument. Okay, truthfully, once we left DC, we both fell asleep because it was pretty boring scenery. And we woke up at a well-placed, but very crappy station in Richmond, Virginia. Wow, we're right on time. I mean, we're three minutes late, but like, that's crazy. There was like a lot of traffic along there, but I guess somehow. They probably pet it. I guess so. Such a cool city. Again, big Philly vibes. Absolutely. Something notable about Megabus is that the stops are really far apart. So our next stop wasn't for another 150 miles in Durham, North Carolina. Motor Coach One. Motor Coach One. Are they allowed to use that branding, or is that like an official? I mean, it's bus. in awful shape, so I would have my doubts. Last Wawa before Florida. This is a weird place to make a rest stop. Just like a subway. Yeah, I think we're doing a rest stop. Am best. Caesars. Ain't that? Ain't that? <laughs> Rest up in about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? 20 minutes. Well, let's go get my wallet then. It's really strange to see this huge, like, double decker bus here. There's an arcade! Oh no, it's gambling. It's gambling. It's, it's, gam it's an arcade for adults. This is an annoying time since like 11 a.m. It's like, I don't. It's like not lunch yet. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get anything. I'm gonna pull out. Yeah, I just Huge hope that we make selection. a rest stop later. We haven't mentioned it yet, but Megabus doesn't have Wi-Fi. This was previously the Wi-Fi zone, and now it's the masks required zone, but they don't actually require masks. How can you be a coach bus company and not have Wi-Fi? That's ridiculous. So do you feel rested? It was nice to stretch my legs. We trundled onwards, eventually crossing the border into North Carolina, and once we got to Durham, we realized that we were close to a celebrity. Isn't this one to 11 for the eight? What is that? The bridge. The Truck eating bridge. Oh, I don't know. Is it? It's like right here, isn't it? Right here is the can opener, the 11 foot 8 foot, <laughs> the now 12 foot 6 bridge. Well, they upgraded it? Yes. So it doesn't still, kill no, people it, anymore? It, it oh. does still can open. They Good. did one recently. Perfect. I feel so much more relaxed on the Greyhound trip. Like, this is just smooth sailing so far. I feel like we've been doing driver switches at each of these, but it's so effortless you don't even notice. And it's not like Greyhound where they're kicking you off at each stop. Like, we don't get kicked off. It's wonderful. Our next stop was Charlotte, which meant we had to bypass a fairly noteworthy North Carolinian city. You can't really tell, but we're in Greensboro, North Carolina. We kind of went around it, but I'm mostly not saying very this. interesting. Well, we just have to say hi to Jeff Brooks. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeff. This road is so boring that I'm thinking of taking another nap, and I realized that the like lean distance to the window is way better than on Greyhound. Cool story, bro. Jeremy woke me up because we're now in the city limits of Charlotte. And I'm gonna be honest, it kind of looks exactly the same as everything else. Megabus isn't known for having convenient station locations and Charlotte's is no exception. It's at this random light rail station that's nowhere near uptown. Gosh, this is a narrow... These buses go down some pretty crazy streets getting to these stations. A lot of the people out there are waiting for the northbound bus, which hasn't shown up yet because it's running an hour and a half late. You know, for Greyhound, that's like a normal day. For Megabus, I'm not sure. It turned out we had to wait for that late northbound bus for a driver swap, but this was communicated to us very clearly. Megabus did a great job here. There goes the northbound. Ah! What? That was the guy. All right, we're leaving 26 minutes late. I'm not... I'm not that offended by that. I'm used to Greyhound. I can I live with 26 minutes late. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a long ride. Like and it was four and a half hours. Yep. There's a good mountain up there. Yeah. Starting well. Is that a way station? It is. We just entered South Carolina. I missed it. Hey, I missed the sign. Oh. Yeah, we were too busy watching Tate set. 
does some excellent videos about Australian transportation. Yes. The world's largest fireworks store. Oh. Do, you think wow. that's, do you think that's true? I'm not doubting it. This bus was non-stop to Atlanta, so we just drove straight through South Carolina. Sorry, Spartanburg and Greenville. Okay, remember when I said, I just hope that we make selection. a rest stop later. Well, I kind of got my wish, but it was a crappy welcome center at the Georgia State line. You're not supposed to park a bus in this spot. This is the kind of jank I was expecting. Uh, some refreshments tomorrow. Really? Why would this be where we do the rest stop? One night. Don't get your email. They don't even have a good brochure selection. There's like one brochure and then a couple more there. So we haven't had a real meal since breakfast. I guess we should have had that 11 a.m. lunch, huh? I, I guess so. And for some reason, we spent like 40 minutes here, so we didn't actually leave until it got dark out. At least we got some good HOV action coming into Atlanta. But Megabus recently moved its terminal from the Civic Center MARTA station to a weird spot outside of the Garnett MARTA station that's almost at the Greyhound station, but not quite. <laughs> We arrived like 70 minutes late somehow. Well, I don't know, traffic and the weird rest stop and whatever. So it doesn't really matter that we're late because this is the part where you kind of have to cheat a little bit in the sense that it's impossible to actually take Megabus through Atlanta. So we have to spend the night Well, here. through and like without like a full overnight. Which is what we're doing. So yeah, we had to cheat here since we had no other options because of the Megabus schedule. We took a bus route that looks like this to get to the Ecstasis Hostel Plus Urban Farm which was honestly really weird and cool. And for 50 bucks a night, it actually made it so that this trip was still cheaper than the cheapest here in flight, which I think is a win. The next day. Hey, there's our friend again. All right, well, hopefully this is the one. It's his Wi-Fi zone. I probably forgot to cover it up, but I guess we'll test it. So this bus is taking us to Memphis and interestingly, the coveted front seats were not taken. So, all right, we're off. On time, 2.30 on the dot. I think that's our first time being exactly on time. Yeah, we're on I-20 towards Birmingham. Are we on? Birmingham is the one stop between here and Memphis. Which is quite impressive. I guess we should also point out the unique amenity of the seat, which is our lines. In case it gets dark out and we want to sleep, but we don't want to sleep. And then they only have one pocket up here. It's not a second oh, one. And the driver warned us, don't put anything in there because it can fall down and just get lost. lost. It was so awesome to sit up here. And because no one had booked them, we were able to just walk up and sit down without paying a penny. So always check the seat map if you're traveling on Megabus because you could score these awesome seats for free. It's beginning to rain. Wait, wow. Just before Birmingham. Will we see it? Yeah. Will we pass it? We should pass it. Buckies! Buckies! It's getting blue now. It's blue. What, what does that mean? I don't know. Buckies! Buckies! We need another one. Buckies! I think that might be it. Oh, oh yeah! Yeah! Buckies! <laughs> So big. I, wait, I love the Bass Pro, the Mega Bass Pro shop. Right next, next door. door. Just make a trip out of it. Yeah, Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. This bridge looks like it's gonna fall apart any day now. This is a crazy system of interchanges going on. How, what neighborhoods did they destroy to build all this? Oh, this oh wow, look at the lady on top. Alabama Power Company. Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame Museum. That's very good Art Deco building. That seems like a place you would end up visiting, like, think you'd be 30 minutes and end up spending like four hours. In. Yeah, this is the Max Central Station, which actually looks quite nice. I think that's the Amtrak station, which looks incredible. Oh, Megabus. It doesn't have the guy. Where's the guy? That's blasphemous. Leave it 405. Make sure you're back by 405 if you're continuing on. Oh, yeah? Do we get Sure. We have 15 minutes. Oof. Oh, that's awful. Jeremy. Yes. Do you remember how this bus didn't have Wi-Fi zone crossed out? <gasps> ooh, ooh. Does it just work? You don't have to do anything? I'm very curious. I don't I don't no, think the Wi-Fi works. works. <gasps> There's a guy! What? Where? Oh! He was okay, he was hiding. It was time to leave Birmingham for Memphis, Tennessee. 
It was going to be tough to give these seats up once we got to Memphis because the views were stunning. It rained, there were mountains, and a third thing. First of all, it's kind of brilliant. Second of all, I love how the Alabama road sign, just Alabama, but squash. That sign said, welcome to Mississippi. Well, tell the road Birthplace changed. of America's music, said the sign. This road got significantly worse the second we crossed the border. Buckle up, it's the law. Yeah, because our roads are terrible. Soon enough, it was time for another rest stop. And I don't understand how Megabus picks these because it was another random gas station. This one was near Tupelo, Mississippi, and it had a fried chicken place. But we decided to save our appetite because we'd have a two-hour layover in Memphis. We're at the stage of the trip where all the shirts at the rest stops become right. really funny. Miles, the Toyota Experience Center. What is, what is that? Do you know what that is? No idea. Oh, it just, I mean, like, sounds it was, cool. <laughs> so it's probably like a Toyota factory. Look at this. They have a whole oh, like, like a museum. Yeah. Oh, that looks really cool, actually. I, I, oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. We should tell the driver to pull off. Unfortunately, he didn't. So we just watched the sun set over the highway as we made our way towards Memphis. Airways Transit Center. <laughs> Oh, the Greyhound restaurant's open. I guess we can have dinner uh, here. I don't want to have dinner here. I do not want to. We're not on Greyhound. We can't have Greyhound food. <laughs> I didn't know Greyhound food was I mean, you can have Greyhound food. I'm going to get Domino's. So on weekdays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 6 a.m. But Saturday and Sunday, it's 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> These restaurant hours never make any sense. Fry our chicken sandwich. Gourmet burger, fast food price. Hungry <laughs> for our bacon, bacon cheeseburger. cheeseburger. No, no punctuation. <laughs> so they just made an announcement. Final call for the 5:15 p.m. trip to Nashville on Greyhound. It's 8:17. <laughs> so it's a. It's almost a perfect. <laughs> three, three hours, hours late. late. Which is actually God. pretty okay for Greyhound. <laughs> I'm just so relieved. I'm so relieved we're not dealing with that. So there is the last Mata bus from here of the night. And there's the. Domino's. Like right yeah, there. it's tr uh, Airways Transit Center accessible Domino's. This is just profoundly depressing. Who would build a transit center out here? There's nothing here except for the Domino's that we now have to kill ourselves trying to get to. Oh no, it just turned green, but I think we can run. Oh, and of course, there's no sidewalk on this side. There's a hole of death. Oh, God. Oh, geez, it's wet. It literally says open late. Is it delivery only? Pick up here. Oh, wait, ring bell for... S ring bell for service. You do it out here? This is... I feel like we may have the grim realization that the Greyhound restaurant might be our only hope. No, 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 no. Place in the water? Yes. yes. What'd you have? Well, I guess we can sit on the... Yeah, 15 minute wait. It's so humid out. Yeah. It's so humid. This is just depressing, honestly. This really is. It's a classic Domino's. Looks fine. Yeah, it'll... I think it's better than anything in there. I went into the restaurant to get some napkins that she just kind of like dumped them. It was nice, she was nice about it. But it was funny, they had a big sign that said, we don't sell water or ice cups. Three dollars for a bottle of water. The gray yes, 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 yes. The most horrible cord you could possibly imagine is the Greyhound sound. It's a Coach USA bus. Doesn't have the guy on it. A few moments later. I feel like the Greyhound staff called us out a little too early here. They're, they're trying to give us the Greyhound experience and I don't want it. Later. Well, this was going too well. Yes, they are having problems with the buses. They just shut off. Much later. As soon as they're attempting to start the bus up again. Yeah. Here comes the driver. Much, much later. It is 10. We're supposed to be leaving. Much, much, much later. Oh, all right, we're getting some good, promising sounds. Just a thumbs up. All right. Just came off the bus with a thumbs up. Oh, we have footrests this time. That is one of the important things oh, missing from Megabus. Nice. It's definitely a more comfortable seat than the regular Megabus seats. No oh, let's see here. No tree table. No, no yeah. thingy. No. No mesh. Careville bus Wi-Fi is us. Of course, no passenger would know this. But it said careful Coach USA on the side. Welcome to Amtrak Wi-Fi. What? All right, wow, so this is our first bus with working Wi-Fi. Okay. Nice job, careful <laughs> coaches. So you could read all night. 
Just said he can't turn the lights off. How? I have, <laughs> then we just go. I have my sleep mask. You have your sleep mask. Good luck to you. Well, it's like we're on a commuter rail train all night. I wish this video was being sponsored by Mantis. The perfect. This is, I mean, yeah, really. My first stop is going to be Little Rock. Actually, is that a stop? I slow down a little rock, open the windows, and push you out. We'll be traveling about 65 miles an hour and about six feet off the ground. If you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If I don't know the answer, I'll definitely Google it. This is great. I love it. There it is. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's the best first shot I I'm gonna give this an honorary beacon of light. You know what? Yeah. I got into position and slept until Little Rock, which was just this crappy stop at a gas station. Did you know that since Megabus got rid of this route and since Greyhound just drives straight through the city for some reason, Little Rock has no intercity bus service at all? Fun. The driver did manage to turn the lights off after Little Rock, and after a rest stop that neither of us got off at, we made it to Dallas. Kind of. Alright, I don't know whose idea it was to put the Dallas bus station for Megabus here, but we're gonna get very familiar with it for the next two hours and 45 minutes as we wait for our I final it. bus. I appreciate it, at least our benches. Yes. Alright, here's why this place is so weird. Here's how close this is to downtown Dallas. Here's what the walk looks like. It's impossible. <laughs> This would be a very depressing place to live on, on the part of the animals. Like you could be out on the open range and elsewhere, you but could instead, be in the entire rest of the state of Texas, and instead you're in interchange hell. Yeah. Voted best view of Dallas. I'm skeptical. We just discovered this pedestrian ramp that comes down here. I, I, it goes away from the city, but it genuinely might be the best way to get out of here. We found a guy. Yeah. Why is the sign way over there? I, it makes me nervous. I know. The bus is on the move. We should get here on time. We're leaving the waiting area oh, to go to the actual people. boarding area. Okay. Oh my god. Why, why wouldn't you stop at literally the sign that says waiting area? I mean... I guess I'm grateful that the highway provides shade. Oh, there's our bus. Thank Ooh, you. It's got footy outlets. Oh, yeah, this is a... I'm glad we're getting fleet diversity, I guess. This one feels old. This one does... I mean, look at the screens. The screens and also the light buttons. I think this might be the most comfortable seat we've had. <laughs> it is. It's the only one that gets. We're off on the last bus. Which, this one notably is a mega bus driver. I'm not sure. Yep. But it's operated by Caravel coaches. Unlike the last one, which is a Caravel coach bus operated by Megabus. <laughs> it's like, what is the difference? We were driving through Dallas Sprawl for about 30 miles before we finally hit farmland. Finally, there's actual rurality going on. Oh. To believe our is that a typo? <laughs> typo? I don't, I don't know. That <laughs> might be a typo. The next batch of footage I have is literally just. Bucky's signs, and then Waco, and then more Bucky's. Don't waste your bucks on a beaver from Wendy's. I kind of like how they're all having a rivalry. This is the final Snyder's. We made it through the whole box. Is it any better or worse than the other Snyder's? It's really desecrated the last one. I didn't realize we were in Philly territory. <laughs> this, that looks like a it's one of those high schools that just stole the logo from the actual team. We eventually made it to Austin Sprawl, which turned into Austin Proper. And Austin Station was a pleasant surprise. Oh, I think this is the station. Whoa. This is actually a cool station. Second to last stop, Austin, Texas. This is not nearly as emotionally draining as Greyhound was. Huh. It's been redone, but it's still cool. Now it's time for a bathroom review. I honestly have no idea why we left Austin half an hour late, but we did. It was basically just sprawl all the way down to San Antonio, but check out this cool trick our driver used at one point. Our driver is very clever because there's traffic on the regular highway, so he just went on the frontage road where you can go basically as fast as you would on the highway and we're far beating the traffic. San 
Santa's Ranch drive through Christmas Light Park. <laughs> that looks fun. Suddenly a million Bucky signs for Bucky's. It's like right here. There were none before this. It's so weird. Like, why not? So yeah, it was basically just like this all the way up to the San Antonio Crossroads Transit Center. We get to do a big Texas thing. This is one of those turnarounds where it's like unsignalized and you kind of just do a U-turn around the highway. <laughs> Hey there, it's 1am the night before the video is supposed to release. Let's debrief. Honestly, Megabus is fine. We didn't feel any sense of achievement. It was just a fine journey. That being said, Megabus is just another indication that the American inner city bus system is failing. They've killed several of the routes that we rode in this video. You cannot do this trip anymore. And somehow they think it's okay to have stations like in Dallas, where it's just, you cannot walk anywhere. Or even something like the Airways Transit Center in Memphis. It's a real building, it's a real station, but it's still in the middle of nowhere. Maybe they'll go under at some point. I don't know. It seems like Greyhound could too, honestly. Everyone's cutting service. I think the government really needs to step in and just do a nationalized inner city bus company. And I know there'll be comments that are like, oh, but the government will run it worse or whatever. And I don't know, maybe that's true, but they'll actually run it. Do we trust Greyhound to still be around in 20 years? I, I don't think I do. Megabus seems like it'll be gone even before that. We need to treat inner city bus riders with dignity. I mean, Megabus does treat the passengers very well, which is a step up from Greyhound. But at the end of the day, I just don't think that the private model is going to work for much longer. That's just what it seems to be. And I hope that someone can actually give a crap about intercity bus passengers, because right now, I don't think you'll find a single politician who does. Man, that was preachy. Anyway, check out the sponsor. <laughs>